over the past month, we have been doing a lot of talking, a lot of thinking about the idea of um, assessment and what it means to schools, to our students, and how, as teachers, we can do it better. For my final assignment, I will be looking at authentic assessments and determining a few areas. For example, what is context to real life and what this means to our students, the use of technology and multimedia and how to better integrate them into our learning. According to Bloom's Taxonomy, my third topic will be higher order thinking skills and incorporating them again into the student's learning and thinking. And finally, mastery and what it means for a student in order to be good at something and to really enjoy the learning process through the success that they find. The reason I selected these particular topics is because I find them to all be very important. I've learned throughout this course about how, as teachers, we truly are preparing our students for the future world that they are going to live in. All of the topics that I selected share this common thread or this common idea of preparation. The transference of skills, the idea of mastery, the ability to use technology are all skills that are going to prepare them for their lives outside of the classroom. And regardless of what career or what direction that our students choose to take, these skills are going to be relevant to their lives. The first topic I would like to discuss with you is the idea of context to real life. This skill is highly important because it's just that. It's the go-between between the theoretical and the practical applications of their learning. Throughout our case studies and throughout all my reading, I have found that this idea of creating realism in our assignments and just preparing our students the best way possible is truly a gift that we're giving to our students. And more than that, it's something that all teachers in our current 21st century classrooms should really be striving towards. Participating in the case study assignment allowed me to see for myself how the assessment process has been shaped by my own experiences. My case study surrounding my experiences at UIC participating in the Capstone Project. This project really did give me true experience and allowed me to see how my skills and knowledge within the business environment could be transferred and contextualized to real life. The literature and the experts had a lot to say on the topic of assessment and learning and its context to real life. One of the overarching ideas is that, according to Jay McTie, Learning needs to be more congruent with the demands of everyday life. Jan Harrington, 1998, shares with us that assessment is oftentimes lacking the complexity that is demanded in the real world. Assessment in our modern classrooms tends to be focused on retransmitting knowledge instead of adding that level of higher order thinking. As a result of my reading of the literature, I found something else to be interesting, something I've always struggled with is finding ways to make everything I do compatible with real life. This is not always practical. And Robert Lynn, 1991, tells us that sometimes, when skills are not completely transferable to the real world, we should at least strive to have them be compatible to other forms of learning. For myself, the most important takeaway that I've gotten out of this entire course, in terms of context to real life, is the importance of continuously bringing it into the classroom and allowing students to experiment, to work with the knowledge and as much as possible mirror the real world. This can be done in all subjects and especially through the integration of subjects because we know in the real world knowledge does not happen in isolation and skills are not developed um, in a solitary movement. Therefore, when practicing and working with our students, the most realistic skills and the most realistic real-life context happens when we allow students the opportunity to play with their skills in a way that mirrors real life. The second topic is multimedia and technology. These skills are critical because the way that teachers are assessing needs to keep up with the demands of the 21st century classroom. The skills that students are learning and are using in the real world are different than anything we even imagined a decade ago. Therefore, in order to prepare students the best possible for their future careers, technology needs to be a substantial piece of the puzzle.
Technology and multimedia, specifically the internet, has changed the face of the way that we interact with our world. Students are now able to contact experts directly and have access to libraries and resources from around the globe. All of these advances are substantial, however, our, the way that we assess has not yet kept up with these trends. The experts have a lot to say on the topics of technology and the multimedia. Joy Cummings, 1999, warns very clearly on the risks of camouflage in assessment. This is, teachers are using the technology in the classroom as fancier means of rehashing traditional methods of assessment instead of using it to its fullest academic potential. Technology has changed the way that we interact with assessment. In his 1999 article, A Short History of Assessment, George Mattias outlines the past two decades and how technology has given way to standardized testing. It is through technology that information is able to be collected, translated, understood, processed, and then put out into a useful form in a way that has never been able to be done before. And with all this being said, it is now happening on a much larger national and international level. One cannot discuss technology and assessment without invoking Thomas Reed. In his 2002 article, Mr. Reed talks about the virtual classroom and the online environment. He talks about how having technology allows students to interact with each other in ways that are new and innovative. In addition, we need to discuss the publishing power of the internet and how students are able to bring their work to a larger audience through blogs, wikis, or just message boards that will expose their work and invoke opinions from others. As teachers, we are constantly looking for ways to better use technology in the classroom. Many classrooms now come with computers. Also, schools will have full labs that will accommodate an entire class. Different schools and in school boards are piloting programs to use smart boards or class sets of eye technology to better accommodate and enrich the learning experience. Teachers can continue to advance their skills and training by attending workshops, networking with their peers, or just spending the time to learn the technology better for themselves. By investing the time into the, our own learning process, we are able to have monumental successful results for our students.